Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Captain Smangry, the 6th NG, and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on how to fly jets in Arma 3. This tutorial will contain tips on actual flying as well as methods and different ways of target acquisition and destruction, I suppose. So without further ado, let's go through these three lovely looking whiteboards I have in front of me. So on the left is the, uh, this is the second aircraft we're using, this is the first one in the middle, and this is the last one. So starting with the first one, we're going to use the L139. This is a two-seater aircraft, and this is the one I'm going to be using for the how to fly section, effectively. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because it is the closest thing in game to the RAF Hawk, which is the training aircraft for the RAF when they're training pilots on how to fly jet aircraft. So I figured the fact that they handle at least decently similarly at low speeds and things um, as well as them looking fairly similar and also the fact that it's one of the only aircraft in game with the uh, two cockpit setup the only jet aircraft rather one of them that has a, the two cockpit setup in tandem just like an actual training aircraft would so that was the method behind the madness of that choice then moving on uh, next I used the F118 and you'll see this later on this was the aircraft that I used when filming the ground attack segment of this video so I'd do a bunch of different runs and things on on different targets and talk about why I chose the weapons how to use those weapons and how to get the best results in destroying your targets now finally for the very last and very short segment of this video I used the F-35, the American aircraft that is now being used by the RAF, or is starting to be used. And this is the aircraft I actually used for the air-to-air -air segment, which is very short and very sweet. It's basically just a aerial version of the ground attack section with different weapon systems and the, the way of acquiring targets and stuff is slightly different but much more basic. So, without further ado, Let's get right into stage one of this tutorial. You join me now outside of this magnificent looking hangar on the lovely map of Sarani from Cup Terrains. I'll put a link to that in the description. And so let's get on into the aircraft then. Need to open this main hangar door as well. Probably shouldn't forget that. Now I'm going to be flying from what would be the instructor seat in the back so it's called observer in this but I can go ahead and take controls and uh, now I can fly from here it does block my forward vision but uh, that is that is not the end of the world so I'm gonna go ahead and throttle up just to get the engine started get the cockpit closed and then shut up the sensor down okay so taxing to start off with just going to up the throttle to about 20, possibly more. It needs a bit of a nudge to start it, so about 30. Then that'll start to accelerate. As that's accelerating, I'll just say um, it's a good idea to not go too fast when you're taxiing. Turning is much, much easier when you're going slow. So I can basically turn on almost on the spot here. But should I be going at 50 kilometers an hour rather than like 20 then turning would pretty much not be possible if I'm honest um, so that's more of when you're actually taking off I tend to taxi around 30 to 40 kilometers um, if I'm on a straight bit I'll accelerate it to around 40 if I'm about to do a turn I'll decelerate to around 30 but I feel like that's just a good speed that gets you there quickly but is controllable at the same time so, I'm just going to taxi to this end of the runway, we'll take off, I'll fly around a bit, and uh, talk about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and then we can go ahead and I'll give landing a shot, even though landing is well regarded to be incredibly difficult in Armour 3. So I'm actually going to go as low as 20 here for this turn, but you'll notice how quickly I can turn. That's uh, just using the rudder on my joystick to turn left and right throttle I'm using my joystick throttle but if you're using your keyboard 
you'll obviously have hotkeys for that. So I'm just gonna taxi onto here. Perfect. Now that I'm lined up, I'm just gonna quickly put the throttle to nil. Um, and what I'm gonna do is before takeoff, notice I'm sitting here nicely lined up on the runway. Before takeoff, what you want to do is put flaps down by one. Now what this is gonna do is I don't know if you can see right back there. If I put them back up, you should be able to see. Yeah, you can see that little bit down there. If I put them back down. Yep, you can just see it in the corner there. That flaps, what they do is um, they decrease the stall speed of the aircraft. So basically the aircraft can fly while going slower before it just falls out the sky. And that's perfect for takeoff because it means you can get off the ground sooner and safer. So you want to put that down by one mark, not fully. Fully would be landing flaps. You need to be able to go quite slow on landing. Um, so just, just down by one mark. You'll notice in the top left, um, in my information box, there's now a white thing with what looks like a bent wing next to the wheels. That just tells me that the flaps are down by that much. Okay, so once you've done flaps, you've got your engine all ready. You just want to go ahead and throttle up to full. This will start you rolling. Um, initial acceleration will be slow, but in not too long you'll get up to around 200 kilometers an hour, or 150 is when you want to think about pulling off. 200 is better if you've got the space for it. So I'm at 150 now, so I could pull off now, but I'm gonna wait till about 180, I think. Yep, 180 is there. I'm right, pulling off, gently pulling back on my stick, or in this case I'd be tapping I think it's S on the keyboard. So now that I'm up and away, I'm gonna press G. Put my gear away. And that is perfect. I can now go ahead and put my flaps. Flaps up again, and you'll notice in the top left. Oh, I put the gear down, so gear up. Flaps up, you'll notice in the top left now gear and flaps are both grayed out which is perfect, that means they're both correctly in and away and I am now currently flying around free as a bird alright so you meet me back over Sarani over the small island at the moment at 1500 meters roughly give or take a bit um, so right now I'm just going to be going over a few basic things you need to know about flying around in the game. So, um, I suppose one of the first things I should mention is if you pull back too hard at too high a speed, you can see the screen's going black, and I'm going to pull out hopefully just before I actually get knocked down from that. Okay, perfect. That is known as blacking out. It's a real thing. It's not just the game punishing you for uh, flying like a like an absolute madman. That is a real thing. It's, uh, I, th I believe it's when you experience so much g-force that all the blood is forced to your feet and away from your head. Now, the converse of this is called redding out, and this will be clear if I go upside down and try to pull up. So, yep, there we go. And that one might have actually knocked me out. No? Okay, I'm good. Um, now, redding out is, as you can imagine, the opposite. It's when you experience negative g, and rather than the blood being rushed to your feet, it's the opposite. It's rushed to your head, which, uh, which gives that effect of redding out. So both of them are things you need to watch out for. Redding out, not so much. It's quite rare to pull negative G-turns at all, ever. Um, though blacking out is definitely a thing you need to be constantly aware of when flying around in the game. Now, I think basics of flight is a good place to start, so I'm going to turn back towards the island and then start this and gain some height as well. I've lost quite a lot. You can already see my screen going darker from that blacking out effect I was talking about, but not too bad. Now ways you can counteract blacking and bedding out um, is when you perform, you can perform two turns, 
they can be identical, but if one of them's much slower, then you're less likely to black out, obviously. So if you're cruising along at what I am now, about 570, almost 600 kilometers an hour, you do a tight turn, you're, you're gone, you're knocked down, your aircraft's probably going into that, that lake right now. Whereas if I'm going at, I don't know, 200 kilometers an hour is probably the minimum before you start to stall. Um, if I'm going at 200 kilometers an hour, I could very possibly make a very tight turn in this. I might stall out the aircraft, but I wouldn't black out. So, let's go over the very, very basic fundamentals of a flight, basically. Um, so if I'm flying along straight and level, and I let go of my controls, I can, and now I'm not holding my joystick, I can look around with my mouse. Um, I'm actually losing altitude, so I'm going to pull up. You can see all the forces are balanced apart from my thrust. My thrust is the only force that is greater than, uh, than my drag, therefore I go forward, basically. If I want to turn right or left, the most basic way to do this, and it's not the best, but I'll get onto what is the best in a minute. The most basic way, say I want to turn right, bank my aircraft, holding fully my stick right, so I'm up 90 degrees, and then pulling back, not too hard because you can see I'm already starting to black out, and I'm going to undo that now, and now I am basically 90 degrees to the right of my heading previous. If I want to turn all the way back around, I'll throttle down for this one so I don't black out, and I'll do it gently, but what I would do I'm still starting to black out actually. Is um, lose speed, so I'm now at 400, and you can see I can pull this turn a bit tighter now. And I'm now back around the other way, so that's the very basic basics of turning. Um, that's how a lot of people like to do it. I think there's a much more efficient way, but with a mouse and keyboard, that is, to be honest, probably the easiest way of doing it. It's just more likely to black out. Now, if you're using a joystick like me, or if you're just quite good with a mouse and keyboard, you might want to do the way that, in my opinion, is much better, which is to add rudder in there as well. So a lot of people think rudder will just turn you on the spot if I do this, and it will start to shift me around, but that's going to take way too long, and in reality, it doesn't work like that. But when using rudder in moderation with um, pitch and yaw, you can see... I can perform a similarly tight turn to the one before, but rather just not at 90 degrees, and you're far less likely to black out. You can pull tight turns quite easily without any anywhere near as many g-forces. And you can see I'm almost turning on the spot here. I'm turning around, probably about around the space of that island right there. And it, it's not hard. So what you want to do for that is tilt so you're at roughly 45 degrees, and then just fully rudder and pull back on your stick. I tend to, if I'm ruddering right, I tend to pull back and slightly left on my stick, but you can just judge that for yourself with what you get. So the way, you can tell you're doing this turn as effectively as you possibly can when the horizon is roughly staying in line where it should be, so you're roughly doing a level turn. Now you can see my altitude is slightly changing, but nowhere near as much as if I did this. You'll notice if I do this, my altitude starts to drop like a brick. Whereas, if I'm doing this, it means I can gain a lot. I can, well, not gain so much. I can gain height while doing it. Um, you'll notice now I'm gaining altitude and I'm still turning. And my speed is then going to start to drop quite quickly. But you can maintain altitude and speed much more effectively. You'll notice my speed and altitude are now basically stuck where they are and I'm still performing a very tight turn. So that's only if you feel confident with a mouse and keyboard or if you're using a joystick, because if I'm honest, that's gonna be a lot harder with a mouse and keyboard, trying to use the rudder, rudder keys and stuff, than if you are rocking a, a joystick like that. So, that's probably the basics of flight. Obviously, um, there's pitch, and, pitch, yaw, and roll over three axes, so, if I want to pitch down, pitching is forward and backwards, so that's me pitching down, trying not to black out. This is me pitching up now. I like that view out across the wing. Uh, 
<laughs> it just looks really nice in my opinion. Um, I'll do a turn and then I'll do roll in yours. So that was pitching. Pitching is moving the nose up and down basically. To your yawing is ruddering. So you'll notice when I yaw, it's quite hard to see. But I'm just moving the nose of my aircraft left and right. And rolling is rotating it. So if I roll left, that's me rolling left. You'll notice my left wing goes down, right wing goes up. Yours to the right, right wing goes down, left wing goes up. So that's that's the three main axes of flight. Um, so your aircraft, everything you do with your aircraft, it moves around those axes. Now I think that's most of the basics. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut back to you guys with some shooting, I think, and I will see all you guys there. All right, you join me back in my lovely hangar with. Uh, with this hangar door that I need to open again. Uh, open hangar door, perfect. I just think that's really nice. That's just a feature from Cup. So Cup is what makes this map, Cup Terrains. Or rather, they don't make it, it's ported from Arma 2. So um, it's, it's just a really nice feature, I think, with that, especially just that hangar door. But this map looks spectacular, especially with long view distances on. So you'll notice I can see fucking miles, and it just, just looks amazing. You need a high high view distance for flying because if it's less than the altitude you're at then obviously you can't see the ground and that can be a big problem. So for this next part we're going to be doing some combat air support and some strike, so ground attack. You'll notice I have a ground attack loadout, there's two, uh, what are they called, B BX9s is it? Two BX9s I think, um, what looks like an AIM-120. Um, and there, there's some other armaments inside, so there's a few Maverick missiles, things like that. So in this section I'm going to be going over target acquisition, um, how to use different weapon systems, how to lock different weapon systems, and one of the biggest things is going to be seeing what your target is and figuring out which weapon system is best suited. So you'll notice on the map I've got three targets set up. Target number one is a radar installation and an HQ. This is quite a big target most likely going to be a bomb target. Same with the stone bridge, this is a sturdy target, so again most likely going to be a high explosive bomb target. And then these T-80s, two of them in a warehouse, or rather at a warehouse, they are going to be laser guided missiles, so you can get direct hits and uh, hopefully take out the tanks. So I'm gonna hop into my Black Wasp. Very nice getting an animation there. I'm gonna start the engine and and I'm gonna quickly take off. So I will meet you guys back when I'm moving towards target one. Alright, so I'm heading over to target 2 now. Um, I've decided to go back to target 1 at the end and go to target 2. I didn't actually number them, so the order I do them in doesn't matter. So, first things first, what you want to do is press Control right click. Now what this will do is bring you onto this lovely looking thing, this little camera. And I can already see my target coming up in the distance over there, so if I press Control T that will now lock me onto the area, so the camera, now when I let go, will stay in the same place. So, this camera has quite a lot of good features, I can press N, night vision, N again, get thermal vision, you can see there's guards stuck around the base, press it again, another thermal vision, and press it again back to normal. So I'm just going to lock onto the bottom of this bridge, that middle support, and on my next run I will talk about locking onto that support. So control right click again, and I'm back to my cockpit. 
you have to be careful not to crash while using that camera. It is uh, it's quite difficult to fly from that camera's point of view. So you have to constantly be uh, dipping back and forth. But I'm going to go ahead and turn back around. You can also see now on my HUD, um, there's that little circle, the dotted circle. That represents where that camera is pointing. So what I can go ahead and do now is when that bridge loads in, surprised it hasn't loaded in by now, there we go. Middle support, now laser marker. I've got it selected as my weapon, so if I press, that's locked on now. If I press T, then laser target 1.1 or now less than a kilometer. Cool, so that is now my laser target. So now, if I switch to my Mavericks, these are laser guided, it says at the top, you can see that. Um, I can turn around and I should now be able to lock on to that a bridge. Hopefully, if all goes well, I don't want to black out. Okay, it's me back around. Now, if I press T, you can see I can lock onto that. And now, I should be able to fire away my missiles. So that's one away going in, looks good, looks on course, and the hill was in the way of where my laser was, so no hit there, but if I wait, nah, it's going to be too late on this run, maybe, okay, I believe I got a hit there, we can check, splendid camera, yes, yeah, so I got a hit there, but it wasn't enough to take out this bridge, now I have seen these bridges be destroyed before, I've destroyed them myself, so I know it's possible but it looks like it's going to take more than a single Maverick to do it. Moving in on target uh, target 1 now, after having done target 2. Uh, coming in quite hot, I'm going to slow down, but I'm going to go ahead and use the camera again. So, control right click, and I should be able to, fairly quickly, if I can find it. I believe it's down there. Yep, acquire my target. So, that is that target lock now. So for this one, I'm going to be using my cluster bombs. So I have two different cluster bombs at my disposal. I have, if you look in the top right, I have a CBU-85 cluster bomb and a BL-778 cluster bomb. And although I'm not using that camera for a laser target this time, it's still a good indication of where it is from far off. So I can get a good long run on the target while knowing where it is. And I'm almost stalling here, but that's fine. So yep, as you can see, I can now tell exactly where my target is from far away because of that little circle. Now I'm going to go ahead and gain a fair bit of height. Oh god, I need to press Alt. Double tap Alt, sorry. Double tapping Alt allows you to move your camera freely with the mouse. I like. It also allows me to use the little stick on the top of my joystick to look around and it is just a really nice helpful feature. So I'm actually going to dive bomb this. That wasn't my anticipated uh, attack route but there's one away. I'm going to pull up and away from that. And let's go watch this one land hopefully. This one may be a miss because it was quite an uh, impromptu run. Okay, so if I go ahead and pause it, you can see it wasn't a particularly spectacular explosion, but you can see that the guys on this side of the building were alright because the bomb landed roughly over here, but everyone who wasn't shielded from that, which was quite a large portion of the uh, targets at this base, were pretty much obliterated. You can see guards out here some guys in the building who survived, some guys behind the building, but from here everyone you can see, and some somehow managed to reach these guys over here as well, um, everyone was pretty much obliterated, I'm assuming it was here so it shielded this guy, um, and these guys, 
but that, although it wasn't a spectacular explosion, that did just do a great deal of damage to the enemy position. So now back in my aircraft, I'm going to go back around and give it a go with the other bomb. Hopefully I can get the other side so I can uh, hit the other group. So this time with the CBU-85. I don't know if either of these bombs are better or more effective than the previous. Um, we'll find out, I suppose. I kind of hope this one has a more spectacular boom to it, but apart from that, can't really complain. So, lining up for the run. Just go ahead and three, two, one, dropping. I think I dropped that one roughly in the same place actually, but you can go ahead and watch it again. All right, okay, so that one didn't do much extra damage. It hurt the guys over here. I don't think it did much to anyone inside the building, or, uh, okay, so it, it took out these guards as well. I think I smacked right in the side of the building, uh, right where the pop smoke. There we go, the aircraft's out of uh, noise range now. It's annoying that it does that. It always counts as if you're, like, right outside it when you're in the camera, but that's fine. So you can see that did a marginal amount of extra damage, but not a ton. Anyway, moving on. Back to the aircraft. Alright, target number three has been lasered, at least one of the tanks has. Um, so I'm just going to come around quickly and hopefully not black out. I say hopefully because it probably will. You can see when I'm around. Um, I'll probably land back at the airfield, you most likely just saw my left. Just down there, uh, looks like a good place to land. But right over there is where the final target is so can't see them at the moment but there are two tanks down there I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my laser guided mavericks And there we have it. Boom, right on the target. So that was effectively what I did at the bridge, um, just with a vehicle this time. So I'll quickly go through what I did with the other tank. That was just a wee demonstration that it can be done quite quickly if it had to be. So if I throw all right down so I can turn. This aircraft is exceptionally fast, but it does mean it's exceptionally easy to uh, go too fast and then black out. So what I did was a quick once-over run. Um, might be able to lock on from here. I don't know if that will have taken out that tank, most likely not. Though Mavericks can take out light armor, so... I'm going to go ahead and go for this other tank anyway. So that is now locked onto that point with a laser marked on it. I've turned my laser on. And you can see in the top right, you'll be able to tell when the laser is active and able to be tracked by the missiles. And you can see the, it looks like an old World War II naval mine or whatever, next to the bit that says code 1111. But what that actually is, is saying the fact that it's grey and not red is saying that there is no laser lock. So now, you can see it's picked up the fact that there is a laser. It knows where that laser is, and now I can press T, hopefully, over the target. There we go, locked on. And now, if I fire away this missile, it should, you can see it moving down towards the target. I'm going to go to the camera. In fact, we can follow it in. So this is in slow motion. You can see the missile coming in. The aircraft is still miles away. 
missile flying in, locked onto the tank, flying along that laser perfectly, and hopefully into the tank. And it appears like it has lost its laser and is stuck in a tree. has bugged out there I think but that is how you would go about laser targeting a tank. Okay so you guys now join me back in a little bit of a dogfight here with a seaside aircraft or what is hopefully about to be a little bit of a dogfight. You can see him down there uh, somewhere. There we go. There he is. Just switched wings and I think he's just realized who I am and so he's going to try and get behind me. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is just follow him around in this turn, not let him get anywhere near behind me. And keep up with him in a turn, not too, not too hard, so... What I can now go ahead and do is switch to my sidewinders. These are close range, fast, heat seeking missiles, though they're not hard to avoid with flares as long as you're quick enough, making the AI very good at dodging them, but I'll show you that now. I almost certainly won't hit him with these, uh, but we'll go ahead and try. Boom, missed. And if I come around again, try and go slower than he is, which is quite hard. Firing again. And you'll see another miss. So, they're, they're not the best missiles to use. Both those times I got a lot, both times I missed. Had I been further away, um, it's not hard to flare past them anyway. So that aircraft is now going to go and do that. I'm going to turn my radar on now and come around, you'll see him on the bottom right in my warning receiver you see him there, I can press T and as far as I'm aware he's actually too close for me to get a radar missile lock but we will try nonetheless so I'm coming around now and I'm back on his tail yes, and it appears like I can't get a lock so I'm going to break off quickly Even to do his own funky thing. He's going to try and get on my six, but I believe if I come around now, I should catch him while he's heading away from me. And now I should be far enough where, if I switch to arm rams, I can go ahead and fire one, two, three, four. Perfect. And purple ammo, that is him out, out of action. There we go, you see him plummet it upside down to the floor. And that is the end of this Russian incursion. Okay, so that sadly brings us to the end of this tutorial. You should now have gone from knowing next to nothing about flying in Armour 3 to being a fairly competent pilot. These three aircraft have been a big help. The L139, the F-35 and the F-118. They're all amazing aircraft in game to fly and if I'm honest they're good ones to start off on. So I hope you guys have really enjoyed this uh, this little tutorial. If you guys want tutorials on any other aspects of armor I can hopefully deliver. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to the channel that would be greatly appreciated. It would really help out me, it would really help out the channel. And it would really help out my Arm 3 group to expand and grow. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Please leave a like on the video. Thank you.